Friends and relatives, my name is Holdswater. I am Duwamish, and I live here in Seattle. I said everything twice so you can hear me. I'm using our, our big house voice to speak with you today. I don't really like using a microphone, because a long time ago our people didn't have devices, we didn't have pens, we didn't write it down, we spoke. And we speak to you if we had to speak to a big crowd in our big house voice. So today, I just want to thank everybody for being here and standing in solidarity for this very important event. And to have it here honors our people and it honors the, the, the event in a very high way. And with that, I want to share an honor song. In our, in our, in our teachings, in our ways, I'm not just going to stand up here and sing a song for you. I'm going to tell you why I'm singing this song. I'm going to explain the song to you, because that's important to us, to us as Salish people. These are our traditions. So the song I'm sharing with you today is an honor song. The first chorus is for the Creator. We thank Creator for everything, the trees that we have to build our buildings, the people around us that surround us every day, the environment that we're protecting. We thank the Creator for that. The second chorus is for our elders and our children, the most important people in our villages. Our elders teach us our lessons, and it's our children that, that carry on these lessons. The third is for all the little things, all the little things that we have today that we take granted for. And the fourth and the quietest one is for yourself. So I just wanted to share that before I just started singing because it's important that, that, that we share this in, in, a, in our traditional way, and I'm not just, you know, here to be tokenized as a singer. You know, I'm here to share our culture. That's what I'm here today for. Woo!
Um, my name is James Rasmussen. Who do you need a name? Good, you're supposed to laugh. Um, I served on the Thomas Council for over 35 years. Um, before me, my mother, Ann Rasmussen, served on the Thomas Tribal Council for about 30 years. Before her, my grandfather, Myron O'Brien, served on that same council starting in 1925 when we reorganized the tribe. I am the Amish, as his wife says. I'm very proud of who I am. I was taught that as I grew up to be very proud of who I am. And this place that you are in right now is the Duwamish Tribe's Longhouse and Cultural Center. And this is built in the same area where the last longhouses that our people had were burnt to the ground. And they were burnt because they were moving people into West Seattle and people didn't want to live next to any of these. So they burnt those longhouses. My people have been here for over 10,000 years. The event we are celebrating today is healing. Our floor actually talks about healing. It's a basket design. You can't see much of it right now because you're all sitting on it. <laughs> but it is about healing. It's not just environmental healing, but it's also sacred, and all kinds of healing inside our body that we have to think about. My cousins, Latino, Latina, Khmer, Vietnamese, Black American people, everybody should be proud of what's happening today. It took us, and I was talking to some of the people I work with on um, Front and Center, well over seven years we've been working very hard on this with legislation trying to go through our legislature, which just completely got undermined each time. Last time was we had another referendum out, and it was undermined because people lied about it. This time, we were ready, and we made it over the finish line. Well, we're not quite there. <laughs> I don't want to say anything. I'm going to screw this up, okay? But um, it would be a miss for me to not say something about the recognition of the Duwamish tribe. We know who we are, okay? We don't have any doubts about that. It gets all screwed up in the federal government. It's not your fault. Although you were in Congress for a little while. I remember you were in Congress. You were in Congress. But I'm going to say it really quickly and hopefully humorously. If it walks like a duck and it quacks like a duck and it looks like a duck, then it's probably a goddamn duck. <laughs> and that's the way people should be looking at Indian people here. We are who we say we are. Again, I raise my hands to you and welcome you to this important place and this important time. And all of my brothers and sisters that I've worked on this for years, you know who you are. Thank you so much for your work. And I was told earlier, now the real work is done. We have a tool. Now we're going to learn how to use that tool. And so with that, I'm not sure who's next on the agenda, but I can look. <laughs> oh. Um, ladies and gentlemen, the governor of the state. <laughs> Uh, by the way, the subject of vaccinations, 
Can we thank the tribal communities across the state of Washington who've done so much to vaccinate both tribal and non-tribal members? Let's give them a round of applause. including our planning laws, including our construction laws, including our transportation system. That systemic racism, unfortunately, through the decades, has been embedded in many systems, not just the legal system. And that is why it is so appropriate that we take big steps in the HEAL Act today to root that out. Across our state, communities of color and low-income communities have been exposed to environmental injustice and are literally breathing the toxicity that has been caused by environmental injustice for decades in our blessed state. Contaminated sites and facilities have produced hazardous waste, incinerators, solid waste landfills, uh, uh, polluting industries, and have concentrated them in the communities that have suffered this environmental injustice for decades in our state. Average life expectancy is 5.7 years shorter for Washington's living in census tracts with the highest environmental health disparities. And black Washingtonians are 10 times more likely to live in an area with the most environmental health disparities than the least. I saw this firsthand. And I have to tell you, this is not a statistical issue for me. It's a personal issue. I was here about 10 years ago, 12 years ago, on the banks of the Duwamish. And I met a young Latinx woman. Her name is Jasmine. I won't use her last name because I haven't got permission from her. But she told me that she, she lives on the banks of the Tuamish. She was 11 years old before she found out that some kids don't have asthma. She thought everybody had asthma because all her friends had asthma. And so she started to do her own research about the propensity of young kids to have asthma and where they live in relationship to freeways. And what she found is every quarter mile you get closer to a freeway, the asthma rates skyrocket. She did her own research on this at age 14. I then asked some University of Washington epidemiologists about that. You know what? She was dead on in what she discovered at age 14. Every Washingtonian deserves the right to breathe clean air. Every Washingtonian deserves a Washington that will make sure we focus on environmental justice when we make fundamental decisions. And with the HEAL Act, that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to ensure that we bring equity throughout the decision-making process in the state government. Today's action on the Healthy Environment for All Act is no accident. It's been built on 25 years of work. One of my heroes, Senator Rosa Franklin, first commissioned the first study of this 25 years ago, and I got to serve with her in the legislature. So I want to acknowledge the tremendous hard work that's done, been done on behalf of frontline communities, the Environmental Justice Task Force members, our fellow elected leaders, our state agencies, and so many community leaders, especially Senator Saldana and Senator Carlisle, 
who have done tremendous work, not just on this bill, but on other uh, bills. Senator Carlisle did a tremendous bill uh, to get it through the Senate. Representative Lakana, Harris Talley, and Fitzgibbon, who've done work not just on these bills, but on multiple bills I'll sign today. Environmental Justice Task Force co-chairs, Victor Rodriguez and David Mendoza, and the organizing that they have done. Front and center, the Duwamish River Cleanup Coalition and Puget Sound Sage. How about a round of applause for everybody who's been involved in this work? So the HEAL Act will implement the recommendations that these communities have advanced in our state. We know that reducing environmental health disparities requires making economic justice a central pillar of decision making in our state. This bill embeds that concept of environmental justice by including it in our strategic plans, our programs, our community engagement, and importantly on our spending decisions that spending follows environmental justice. It doesn't just reverse that and make environmental justice the caboose on the train. It makes them the engine driving the train of environmental improvements in our state. It requires agencies to conduct environmental justice assessment for certain agency actions as rulemaking, new grant and loan programs, and agency proposed legislation. By explicitly considering how overburdened communities may be impacted, agencies can develop ways to avoid that overburdening impact and advance environmental uh, health at the same time they advance environmental justice. And it sets important goals by more equitably distributing state spending to help environmental harms be reduced and provide environmental benefits throughout our state on an equitable basis. It builds upon the environmental disparity that we've seen uh, with using the mapping tools that are now available to show where this inequity is occurring. And it supports the needed staff, uh, staff capacity and interagency coordination to build expertise, to share the lessons we learn, and to create effective uh, processes. This also uh, puts meaningful public participation from frontline communities at the center of our efforts to reduce environmental health disparities. It does it in two ways. First, it establishes the Environmental Justice Council. It's made up of, uh, of affected communities and environmental justice experts. And it will advise us on our important work throughout our agencies. Second, it requires agencies to develop community engagement plans that are specifically designed to provide meaningful involvement of these overburdened communities. And as the state begins to set a course towards greater environmental justice, we will in inevitably learn lessons along the way and we were incorporated. This is not the end of this journey. This is the first step on this journey. And we want everybody to be with us in the canoe, pulling it in the same direction. So I'm committed to meeting these goals. Now I've said a lot about what this bill does. It sounds like process, but in process is results. It's time to put a process to work for environmental justice. That's what we're doing today. We've studied this issue long enough, so it's time, it's time to start pulling. And we've got a head puller here, Senator Saldana. Come on up here and tell us what we're going to be doing. Thanks, Senator. I'd like to ask Representative Kirsten Harris Kelly to join me. So. I'm only halfway vaccinated, so I'll keep my mask on, but I'm on the way, and I'm really grateful that our children are now starting to be able to have access to um, vaccinations as well. Um, just want to take a moment here um, with my dear colleague um, who has joined me on making sure that we move forward environmental justice. Today is a monumental day for our movement for climate and environmental justice. And I want to thank our community members and agency staff who put in endless hours of work this session, but to what um, James spoke to earlier, for years and years. And we are standing on the shoulders of so many environmental grandmothers and grandfathers who came before us. In the legislature, it is Senator Rosa Franklin who um, started 
really making this a critical issue that the legislature needs to look at. And it's because of her that we have the environmental, um, the Council on Health Disparities. And so I want to do a special thank you to Christy Hawk, who has been mostly the lone staffer there. But thanks to um, our work um, to build first the Environmental Justice Task Force, we're able to bring on Elise Rasmussen and Israel uh, Lopez, who did incredible outreach work, and also um, to the co-chairs, um, who David Mendoza and Victor Rodriguez, who spent hours and hours making sure that we heard and that the practice and the process of the EJ task force was grounded in our community practices, our values and our cultures of centering um, those most impacted to help inform and shape what um, needs to happen. And they held gatherings in all four corners of um, Washington state. They met before um, the official meetings to hear from community. And that is what informed this report that came out last December. And it's from that report that we built together the HEAL Act um, and worked throughout this session to get it on. And it's important to me um, that in it, we are putting into statute um, the definition of environmental justice. And this is the definition that they recommended. Environmental justice is the fair treatment and meaningful involvement of all people, regardless of race, color, national origin or income, with respect to the development, implementation, and enforcement of environmental laws, regulations, and policies. And this includes an intersectional lens to address disproportionate environmental and health impacts by prioritizing highly impacted populations, equitably distributing those resources and benefits, and eliminating harm. It is about how we approach all the work that we do. And it's about the accumulation of both the unintended and intentional lack, lack of centering black lives, indigenous lives, communities of color and immigrants in our work. It's those practices that resulted in systems and institutions that has led to those disparities that we now see on the map that shows that by design, certain communities across our state pay a much higher price in health and an opportunity than others based on where they live. And so it's these policies that has brought us here today to undo those harms and to what the governor said is to make sure that environmental justice drives all that we do as we move forward together for a Washington that is worthy of our children and our grandchildren, that is worthy of making sure that our air and our salmon and our water are here for the generations to come. And it is to what, we, what has been said that the work is just now continuing, but it requires a doubling down because what we're doing is we're dismantling systems at the same time that we're building new structures um, for, that are worthy and that will work for the future of Washingtonians. So thank you all for being here today. Uh, I know that Representative Parrish Talley just wanted to do also add her um, gratitude for those that are here with us today. Thank you so much, Senator Saldana. Um, and I want to thank you, uh, Ms. Cicely, for hosting us today in, in your long house and in your home to this day. Um, this was my first legislative session. And this is one of the proudest policies I got to vote yes on because I came to it from advocacy. It's been many years in the making. My youngest turned six on Friday, and they weren't even born yet when this work started. I want to thank Front and Centered for continuing to put a centering of those voices who are on the front lines of the injustices. I want to thank you for what you said, Mr. James, about what it is to start this path of healing. I've been thinking about healing a lot. This law, yes, it's a climate law, but this is about healing our communities. And the reason that this is a policy about process is because there has been process for generations that would tell our communities that our histories were not right, that we were mistaken, that the laws that were shaped through processes where we were not allowed in the room is as good as we could have. 
and that there could be nothing done about it. What healing means is that we have an opportunity with this policy to start a path to amends. Amends starts with the acknowledgement that you have done someone wrong. And it asks of you to make it right if you can. And then it tells you to change your behavior so that you never do that wrong again. This act is a start of a process for Washington State, and I hope everywhere across this country, to start the amends of what it is to have intersectional policies that have had black, brown, and poor people continue to take the burden of what is the most unjust things in our society, from where we are forced to live to where we are forced to leave to whether or not we will have clean air, clean water, and clean soil to grow food in and play in while we're doing it. I am ecstatic to be standing here with Senator Saldana because in our district, I don't want one more auntie to die 10 years too early because of the air she breathes. I don't want one more child to have asthma just because of their zip code. And I don't want any more pregnant people to worry about the health of the child that they're bringing into this world. I'm so delighted to be in a room with children today who will not know what it was like before we had this law in the books after today, who will always know we were on this path. And I want to thank every person here who did the work to get us here. Thank you. And now I, now I have the honor to, rep, to bring up our other colleague who was my champion over the last three years on this work and has continued to be a teacher and a partner of what it means um, to make sure that bodies that weren't always representative and didn't have our communities at the table, what it means to be at the table together. So Representative Lacana. First and foremost, to the Duwamish people, as a Tlaket and Aleut woman from Southeast Alaska, I must introduce myself accordingly. My Tlaket name is Hicks It comes from the very headwaters of the in-stream flow where the baby frogs live, where there's cool and clean water, where there's habitat, where the baby salmon grow. I come from Southeast Alaska. The power in this house flows through my skin as I stand with all of you. It flows through the bloodline. I stop to let the Duwamish people know the voices and the power that is felt here is overwhelming. It brought, it brought tears to my eyes. It's an honor to be in your house. Today is a day to celebration. It's a day to heal. Today we are bringing environmental health to all. As a Native American woman coming from Southeast Alaska, I grew up in the shorelines where Jasmine was thinking, there was no asthma where I came from, you're right, Governor. The foods that I ate were clean. When the tide was out, the table was set. When I first came to Washington State as a young woman, eager to bring everything I knew here, I looked at the Native American tribes and I said, where are your salmon, where are your shellfish, where are your seaweed, where's your hooligans? They said, they're gone, Deborah. After 150 years of living in a pollution-based economy, the first Washingtonians had lost their foods, their waters were dirty, their air was dirty. But they had hope. They had hope that a partner in a governor, a partner in a legislature, a partner in a local government, a partner in our advocacy, that the mums would step forward and say, the next generation, the next generation of the baby will not grow up in the same environment as we once had. The HEAL Act is a celebration for all Washingtonians. Thank you to front and center who raised this, to a woman named Iko, who sat down next to me and said, Deborah, our children drink the same water. Our children eat the same foods. Our children deserve the same as any child, no matter what your zip code is. It's a pleasure to work with my colleagues, my sisters from the Senate, my brothers from the Senate, my sisters from the House, my brothers from the House. I will work hard and continue to collaborate with them. Whether you are digging your hands in the dirt up in the Skagit that's been contaminated by pesticides, whether you're breathing the climate change fires in eastern Washington, 
whether you're drinking the dirty waters or eating the foods of the, that have bioaccumulative waste, we're going to address it together as a family in the state legislature and more, more bills to come. We're going to raise our hands to the governor who spent his whole entire life telling us that a clean environment and climate change does exist, right? <laughs> climate change does exist. And no matter how many times Senator Carlisle or Senator Saldana or my wonderful new friend Kristen harris Talley, or my governor, they said, we'll just continue business as usual, another 150 years of pollution-based economy. We're going to say no. We can build a better Washington for the next generation. We can make sound economic decisions with resilient environmental protection in them because we are Washington State. As the only Native American woman to represent Native Americans, Washingtonians, and the state legislature, I sit on the floor where there are beautiful people of color. There are different languages, there are different color colors, there are different religions, there are different loves. We in the Washington State Legislature truly represent Washington, and we have a governor who's not afraid to stand up and do something different and do it, because it's about time we do something right for the next generation. So thank you. Thank you to the Duwamish people for allowing this Gleekette girl to stand in your homelands. And with that, I'll turn it back over to the next speaker. Greetings and much gratitude to the Duwamish Tribe for hosting our community gathering today. Thank you, Honorable Tribal Chair Cecile Hansen, for your gracious and tenacious leadership as the longest serving Indigenous woman and Tribal Chair. It is with deep respect and honor that we are guests in this sacred space, home also to Coalition member and front and centered James Rasmussen, whose remarks reminded us today of how HEAL is about a hard history and the future. On this special occasion of the HEAL Act bill signing, I want to ask that the governor and the many elected dignitaries who join us today, recognizing the power of the environmental justice community, of movement of frontline BIPOC people from all parts of Washington State. My name is Yolanda Matthews, and I serve as the co-lead of the Front and Center Council of Community Leaders. We are the most diverse coalition of community groups whose missions and work may be different but we come together in solidarity around a shared vision for equity and environment and climate justice. As James mentioned, the passage and now signing of this monumental legislation is the result of our community's lived experiences, stories, and diverse expertise, which then became an eye-opening tool in the co-creation of the state environmental health disparities map, map, which accounted for the metrics of pollution economics, and social determinants. It was no surprise to our communities that environmental health disparities are cumulative and that where you live determines the quality and length of life. The revelation of the environmental health disparities map pushed us to go further out into the communities and listen again and again to what they are experiencing. The Environmental Justice Task Force further illuminated the truths which are which our frontline communities already knew. With dramatic recommendations on how to address the environmental health inequities, from reparations to agency rules and resources, we need a reset for the future. Today, what the HEAL Act represents is a question about how might we literally heal the inequities of the past in the midst of the biggest crisis we face, climate change, environmental degradation, and racial injustice to ensure a more fair and equitable future. As a climate justice advocate and organizer for Puget Sound SAGE, my work alongside the many coalition members of Front and Centered is about answering that question and efforts to create a just transition. A future where equitable governance means our voices are at the table, like the much anticipated Environmental Justice Council in the HEAL Act, community solutions are meaningfully considered through the HEAL Act's direction of the seven agencies who must undertake environmental justice assessments. 
and the chance at regener regenerative economies and renewable energy solutions through our voices having influence over the state agency and corporation of environmental justice principles in budgeting, strategic plans, and policy making. These are the policies the, which our coalition and frontline communities have worked so hard to organize behind and now proudly champion as a continuing movement. While the HEAL Act signals the start of, our new, of a new day for our state, it serves as a foundational milestone for which our frontline communities will build a tran just transition for all. Thank you. I raise my hands high to the Dunamis tribe for opening your homes to so many of us on this special occasion. I extend my greetings and deepest gratitude to many compas and community, my sisters and brothers whose labor together has allowed us to arrive at this moment of healing. My respects to the governor and to the many honorable dignitaries present today. It is an honor to be part of this ceremony, signing the HEAL Act into law. My name is Lucy Madrigal, and, I'm a, and I am a promotora coordinator at Community to Community in the Northwest Washington. I am a proud, proud daughter to farm workers in the Skagit Valley whose parents came here in search of an American dream. I am joined by many farm workers here today. My work, my family's labor, and the communities of farm workers I support as a promotora are all together part of the central frontline workers who seed, root, harvest and work the fields of Washington to feed the world. We do this even in the middle of a global pandemic. With courage, dignity, and serious awareness of how our labor, labor makes a difference. That is why on behalf of the thousands of farm workers around the state, the HEAL Act is just the beginning and part of a new environmental health, equity, and justice. But what does environmental and climate justice mean to farm workers? I can tell you that it means the need for more, I can tell you that it means the need for more safety and health measures to reduce the risk of heart-related illness, pesticide poisoning, respiratory care, adjust work schedules to alternate the hottest hours of the day, rest breaks and personal protective equipment to ensure that the craft of harvesting and cultiva cultivation of food sustainable. These are just some of the ways in which we very, very clearly understand the impact for climate environmental justice on a day-to-day -day level. For farm workers, the promise of Heal Act is just, sorry, let me start over. The farm work, for farm workers, the promise of the Heal Act is that our voices can be heard, not just our stories of hardship, but also our idea and expertise about practical effort solutions. It is about connecting our participation and insight as people who are doing our part to share in the stewardship responsibilities to care for the land, respecting Mother Earth, and cultivating the food system for, for, our, for our many different communities. My sister Yolanda Matthews mentioned our coalition work and vision for our just transition. For farm workers, that means the, tr means the transition to a healthy economic, econ economic just Sorry, I'm so nervous. <laughs> For farm workers, that means the transition to a healthy economy just must be a just one for at least among us. That we as farm workers must be given the chance to lead the building of a new economy that is both sustainable and equitable. One where we are not just harvesting food for other communities to thrive, but our families are also healthy, food secure, and thriving. Community to Community Farm Worker Co Co Cooperative, Tierra Libertad, is one of many examples emerging to, as sustainable community-driven farms, centering frontline communities and principles of environmental justice. We are looking forward to sharing these and other ideas as we engage in full implementation of the HEAL Act. Thank you.
Buenas tardes. Mi nombre es Magdalena Angel Cano. Good evening. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Magdalena Angel Cano. Before I continue, I want to say thank you to the Duwamish tribe. Thank you to you, Governor. And thank you to our community leaders who are here today. Thank you for the advocacy that has been put into the SEAL Act. And today, we are here to celebrate nothing but something that will continue as a tool, as the government mentioned. Um, for me, I am here today. I am a 20-year resident uh, Duwamish Valley community member with my family who immigrated from Michoacan, Mexico. Um, we have been here for 20 years, and as our government mentioned, we have a lot of youth programs, and Jasmine, who didn't know about asthma being um, not, not a thing anywhere else, that happens with many more of our youth down the Duwamish Valley, myself included. I was part of the Duwamish Valley Youth Corp and learned at the age of 14 that asthma was not something I was supposed to have. The health concerns were not something I was supposed to have. So I'm here today to say, as many of our, our colleagues and uh, government and everyone here community has mentioned, our identity, our zip code is not something that should determine our health and our safety and environment here in, in Washington in general. Um, so I'm here also to say a little bit about myself, right? I mentioned my family is immigrant. We are in the Duwamish Valley. We didn't know about this. And youth involvement is really important to me because I am the community organizer of the Duwamish River Cleanup Coalition. I work a lot with communities, immigrant communities, Khmer, Somali communities, and I am working with them, bringing these resources, teaching them about the Duwamish River, teaching them a bit about the history, and I get a lot of questions about, okay, thank you, like, what can I do next? And that's where I feel like I get stuck. I feel like I need people to rely on, I need people to hold my hand, and with the HEAL Act today, I feel like I have that tool now and where I'm not the only one in my community working towards a healthy and safe environment, but I can now count on state and say, well, we have the HEAL Act. This tool can be used for our safety, for our health, and how can we see that being uh, taken in place. So once again, I want to say the work, hacks, work is continuing. We are here together, and I'm just going to say this. United, we could all do the work together. So let's keep the advocacy, and thank you so much for the opportunity to be here today and talk to you all.
Signed a bill giving our hardworking agricultural workers, Lucy, overtime protections, long overdue for our hardworking agricultural workers. We're going to be signing some of the best laws in the United States to bring accountability and justice to our to our police system in the United States. And today we, we talk this off with the Heal Act, but at the same time I will be signing laws that protect against plastic pollution that I just signed and a bill that will reduce carbon pollution to fight climate change. This is a great month for justice uh, in the state of Washington. And I want to thank everyone who is behind me and in this long house. I hope you're enjoying that great step for justice. Senate Bill 5141 enacts key recommendations from the Environmental Justice Task Force to reduce environmental health disparities. We know environmental justice will now be a core part of Washington's strategic plan, of our programs, and of our community engagement efforts. The bill puts meaningful public participation from overburdened communities at the center of our efforts to reduce environmental health disparities, to dismantle environmental racism, to end the epidemic of asthma amongst our children. Now, there's some remaining uncertainty for fiscal and policy impacts and requirements, and the legislature did not fully fund a few agencies on their expected costs. Therefore, I'm encouraging agencies to track their expenditures and request supplemental funding where resources provided currently fall short of the estimated needs. We need to keep talking to our <laughs> Every Washington we know deserves a healthy environment. And this bill is a monumental step in making that a reality. I want to thank the prime sponsor, Senator Saldana, and all those who have made this a great month for justice in the state of Washington. Finally, I just want to tell you how I look at this bill. When I was sitting here listening to great singing, I looked over her shoulder a picture of Princess Angela. And if you look in her eyes, what this bill, in my mind, we want to do is when we make decisions in Washington State involving the environment or anything else, we want to look at it through Princess Angeline's eyes. And if we look through the eyes, her eyes, we're going to make some good decisions in Washington State. With that, it's an honor to sign Senate Bill 5141.